What's up people, welcome to our video series Cost of Building in Ghana. If you happen to be a first timer, I will encourage you to check the previous episodes so that you have a fair idea where we've come from. So this is going to be our 10th episode and we will be discussing block molding. In one of the earlier episodes, we talked about the advantages and disadvantages of buying and then molding your blocks. So I promised I was going to get a video and show you how it's done so that you can decide whether you want to buy or mold. So to, to do the molding, of course, you first need to get a sand. Usually they have the rough, medium and smooth sand types, but you don't need to remember all this. You just need to tell the, the tipper driver that you want for plastering, block work or for block molding and so on and so forth. And they will get you the, the right sand type. The tracks that brings the sand they have 20 cubic and then 18 cubic. Often you can easily have them selling 18 cubic track to you as a 20 cubic. So just make sure you check that out. I'm not too sure how to determine that. At least I have this ineffective way of checking to see if it's 20 cubic. I sometimes count the squares or cube at the side and usually I'm expecting to count eight, but as indicated, this is ineffective because if the patterns happen to be rectangular or any different shape, it will be quite difficult to determine the cubic using my method. Of course, if the sizes also, I don't measure the sizes of the squares of cubes, so if they are smaller, it could also be deceptive. One thing which helped me was usually if the track has four axles, you can be sure that at least it's 20 cubic meter. So I used to have that, but um, the guy changed his, um, his track and I kind of have a feeling the one shown in the video so is not 20 cubic meter because when I check online, um, it's about 19.3, but that is not really the problem. The problem is when they bring you an 18 cubic meter one. 19.3 and 20 cubic meter is not much of a difference. But for the 18, it makes a big difference, especially when you are buying the stones. I, I am aware usually the model of the truck, especially the Chinese one, the 336 or 371, indicates the horsepower but that hasn't been really effective because sometimes i don't know whether they remove it on purpose or sometimes uh, they may put in a different one there to deceive you so if anyone watching knows a better way to check the capacity of the bucket feel free to post so that we we can all learn from you the molding that as you can see that is how it is done and uh, he usually does about seven bags a day so at this point he was charging me 15 cities per, per bag but this was in january january this year that's 2021 so i would advise that if you're planning to mold maybe you should budget um, up to 20 cities for for this because um, there's, there's been recent price hikes so i'm quite sure that if he should do it for me now he's going to take a little bit more um, I'm, I'm usually doing for the hollow blocks 5 inches I'm doing 30 blocks per bag of cement and this comes out really good as you will see shortly for me on any given day I will prefer to mold because as I indicated when you mold is stronger um, what many people don't realize is the factories are usually getting about 50 blocks per per bag of cement for 5 inches so it has lower content of cement but the advantage they have is they are using machine for the compaction so it tends to make it stable the the places where they have to lay the blocks after they mold it has to be leveled especially with the hollow one for the solid ones it may survive even on a slightly sloping slightly slopy ground but for the hollow, if you're not careful, it's going to disintegrate. So um, even though the space in front is enough to take more than the blocks that we were molding, one side is not leveled because we are working and tracks are passing and so on. So the back, the, the, towards the end, 
as you can see where the blocks are can only take about two days job so that should give you about four, 400 to 500 blocks so that is why on the third day we get them to pack the blocks so that there'll be space for new ones to be put there if they are molding for you at the factory they wouldn't be able to pack within three days usually they'll give you up to five to five days to one week and that's because it has lower contents of cement so for the parking for the first floor the person parking charges us 40 pesos and then for the next floor we are charged twice the price 80 pesos usually it's important that when you are pack when you are packing your blocks you need to make sure that it is spread evenly on the floor packing it at one side will mean not having a distributed weight and that may affect your your structure so have them distributed as you can see in the in the video and i usually let him pack i think five levels so each one that you see is 50 blocks for each uh, each of the the groups that you see is made up of 50 so at least that helps with the counting when you, you get back and you are ready to pay the person this guy is quite hard working so he's able to pack 400 a day alone so he starts usually around nine eight between eight and nine and by four o'clock he's done with the 400 but for the the floor above he does half of that and it makes sense because he's going one level up so you would notice some of the blocks are white and others are brown so if you are like my quality control manager who is my wife and you prefer the white blocks to the brown ones you can just tell the guys to make sure they get you a whiter sand instead of the brown it doesn't matter anyway because the blocks will be plastered and painted so the color shouldn't matter but of course if you like the aesthetics even before the building is complete feel free to tell them and they will do their best to get you the whiter sand Another thing you should pay attention to is whether you are buying the blocks from the factory or you are getting someone to mold it for you. Always opt for the option to have someone pack them up before the masons come. There are two options available to you. One is what I've mentioned, to have someone pack them for you. The second one is you're going to pay for an additional laborer to do the packing when they are molding the blocks but if you're doing this it means that you are going to pay a laborer which is about 70 or 80 cds depending on um, where you are or how you negotiate with your workers if you do the math you will notice that for usually the quantity of blocks that are needed for one unit it will be better you get someone to pack aside that it makes the job faster All right, so let's look at the total cost for the block molding as well as the packing. So for that, it's going to be, I didn't color this one because the sand was bought earlier, but I'll add it so that you have the, the clear idea of the total cost. So everything was about 6,000 as you can see here that's about a thousand dollars and we we made about 1750 blocks okay and so for the bonus discussion today we'll be looking at what you probably should get ready on your side before starting and this was based on a comment made in one of the earlier episodes but before we go on, I want to respond to two comments in the previous episode on conduit. There were two comments and I think the comments are worth uh, sharing because they bring a different perspective on conduit. So the first one was from Ghana Finest and he was asking about the difference between laying pipes on the floor and the traditional ways of having it over the roof. So it depends you, this you could go with this because in some instances it could be more cost effective because if you decide to put your your switches above the maybe mid section on your wall then going through the ceiling 
would be a better option because you would you would have um, lesser runs of cable because most of the time the main switch is at the higher le at, uh, on the higher part of the of the floor but for most people the switches are just about a foot or two feet above the finished floor so if you go this way you may need a longer run because you now have to go all the way up before dropping it to the to the main switch that is why now many people are going on the floor level because most of the switches are on the floor level but for the light switches all of them definitely will go through the ceiling the second comment was from Michael Kojo Anderson and he was asking about the cost benefit of having to chisel the blocks to lay your electrical conduit rather than using hollow blocks and then having the conduits pass through the hollow blocks and I, I feel this perspective was a more cost effective way of doing it because you wouldn't have to pay the electricians for the chiseling of the of the wall all you need to do is during the block laying you will just run the conduits through the hollow blocks and for the ground floor most people use solid blocks so maybe that wouldn't work but for the upper floors i think this is a more effective way so um, i noticed that many of you are contacting us by mail with your questions it's fine and we have no issues with that the only challenge we have is some of you are asking questions that we have already provided answers to in earlier episodes so um, just make sure you you watch the earlier episodes and if you don't have an answer go ahead and then um, send us an email by doing this at least you save us that time to attend to questions that we haven't captured in any of the videos and to make it easier for for you to see all the videos i've put together episodes one to nine in a playlist so just click on the playlist tab and you should have all the videos so um, i should add this um, episode to it so i'll have episode one to ten in as one playlist and then when we get to episode 15 or 20 i'll put those in another playlist as well Okay, so um, some of you contacted us for the number for the people who rent the plywood. So we thought instead of uh, having you guys wait for us to reply on Sundays, um, the number of the, the plywood rental is showing on your screen. If never used any of them as you noticed, as we indicated in the video, we bought our own plywood. But for the spinters guys, my friend used them. So I know it works. The Spinters guys are more like a company, whereas the OEB guys are some kind of um, I don't know whether to call it a company, but they are they are trying to make an effort. So if you call them, you may have to wait for the plywood, maybe for someone to bring it back. But for the Spinters guys, um, I understand it's more like a, a well-structured organization. And by the way, <laughs> none of these guys are sponsoring this video. To the main uh, this topic for the bonus discussion regarding preparation it varies so much and it depends on the location of your site now if your site is in a built-up area it's fine to get a tank water tank because you would need it anyway especially in Ghana when water flow it's not it's intermittent so it's okay to buy a tank and use it because no one will steal it however if your site is in a less built up area or a new site you risk the tank being stolen people used to do manhole and store water in but with the biodigesters now people don't do manhole because it's going to lock up your money so in that case i would advise you could just do an above grade block structure maybe five courses and then put concrete in the middle so that they just pour the water in okay so another tip is to us we don't think there is really a need for a storage for building materials the the reason is this you are likely to have your materials stolen especially if you are going to buy cement in bulk if 
the thieves know that you have 200 bags of cement locked up somewhere or even 100 to be something worth stealing because that's a lot of money so what we do is we just buy early in the morning mostly by 7 the shops are open so we buy enough for them to work with so when they come usually they will stay for about five days you check with them how many days they want to stay and then we buy the quantity of cement needed for those days once they are there no one will steal them but we won't buy cement down when there is no one there they often come with mosquito nets and then they sleep it's more like a camp for them so that is it for this episode feel free to post all your questions in the comment section below we certainly do answer all questions on um, sundays and remember websites phone numbers email addresses are automatically filtered out so we may not see your comments if you include any of these thank you for watching so watch out for the next episode and see you in a bit enjoy people